Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to do look ahead. Now, look ahead is arguably the most important skill for CFOP users to develop and it is what separates you from being sub 20 to being sub 10. And if you get really good at it, you can be as fast as Felix, Max, Timon, or Leo, whose look ahead is absolutely crazy. But this is also the most difficult skill to develop and one that requires a lot of practice and patience. But don't worry, I'm here to provide you some insight on how to make your look ahead practice more efficient so you can achieve that coveted level of being sub 10 or whatever your current speed cubing goal is. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, now let's get some basics out of the way first. Just a reminder, whenever you're plotting your next F12 pair, you always swap the corner first and then look for the corresponding edge piece instead of the other way around. Now, why? Because it takes a lot less time to scan for edge pieces since they have two colors versus, a cor versus corner pieces that have three colors. Take this cube for instance. So if I were to say find the blue orange edge piece, I'd be a lot quicker than finding, let's say the green orange and white corner piece right here. Overall, there are more colors to process and thus it is harder for you to identify. And that's why you should aim to find a corner piece first when looking ahead, as then you can find your edge piece more instantaneously, leading to a seamless transition into your next F2L well pair. But if you find the edge first, you're more likely to require more time and then finding the corner piece, leading to awkward pauses, which break your momentum and cost you time. Okay, so now that we clarified that basic rule, we will now move on to the start of this video, actually looking ahead. Now, what is look ahead? Look ahead is plotting what your next F2L pair is while solving another pair. And that's the hardest part. We have a bad habit of looking at the F2L pair that we are solving, leaving no time to spot and immediately transition into our next pair. And that accounts for those notorious awkward pauses. Now, from what nearly every other look ahead tutorial says, in order to build proper look ahead skills, they recommend you to practice solving your F2L pair slowly to recognize the other pieces. Now the reason why so many people say this is because it's true, at least from my experience. We need to build the confidence in solving a pair while not looking at it and instead be determining what our next pair is. And that is a very gradual process, so we generally need to start off slow and build our speed. Now, how exactly do you break this habit? To help get you started on looking at pieces other than the ones you are solving, tilt the cube upwards, because if you have the cube held straight forward, you're pretty much just gonna have tunnel vision on the pair you are solving, and thus you can't see the other pieces as well. Tilting the cube upwards helps to provide a more holistic view of the cube and encourages you to look at other colors instead of the pair that you're solving, and thus you'll better be able to identify your next F2L well pair. Now, if that's still not helping breaking your habit of looking at the pair you're solving, in addition to tilting the cube upward, you can start scanning pieces on the side opposite to that you're solving. So if I'm solving on the right-hand side, I can start looking for corner pieces on the left-hand side. Overall, these are the tips that I was discovering during my practice, and when having this mentality, I saw rapid and effective improvements in my look ahead. Now that we've discussed how to allow yourself to scan for F12 pieces, Let's address how exactly we should scan for F12 pieces. And this is one aspect I find look ahead tutorials don't cover or at least don't explicitly outline. And I think it is very important to emphasize the scanning strategy so you can really focus on it in order to save a lot of time from the countless hours of your look ahead practice. So here is a scanning strategy or hierarchy of which corner pieces to target during look ahead. Number one, when solving your F12 pair, first see if there are any corners in the top layer and then you can move on to finding your corresponding edge piece. So for, so for example, I'll be solving this blue orange uh, piece uh, F2L pair right here. And as I'm doing that, I notice that I have this red, green, white corner piece. So I've identified that corner piece and now I'll be tracking, to uh, now I'll be seeing where its corresponding edge piece is. And as I'm doing that, I notice it's right here. So I'm just tracking now to see what F2L case I'll get. I notice it and I can go right into my next F12 pair while tracking the next uh, F12 while plotting the next F12 pair. Secondly, if there are no pieces in the top layer, look at the corner piece in the slot you are inserting since that corner will end up in the top layer and then you can try to find the corresponding edge piece. So let's take a look at this example. I'm going to be solving this orange blue uh, pair right here, this block right here. 
and I notice that there are no white F12, white F12 corner pieces I can use for creating an F12 block. So I'm going to look into this slot right here as I'm solving it and I notice that this corner piece is right here and I know that it will be in the top layer because this block has to go in here. So, I'm going to, so I have this blue red corner piece and I'm going to be looking for its corresponding edge piece which I find right over here. Then I, can ins then I can solve this block here and as I'm doing that I can now look into solving this while also plotting my next F12 pair. Now thirdly as another option if there are no usable corners in the top layer is to go to any other empty slot and immediately take that corner out since there has to be a usable F12 corner right there. And once again once you're doing that you can also find the corresponding edge piece. So let's take a look at this case over here. I'll be solving these two and creating a block for it. And I notice that there are no white corner pieces for me to use for my F12 block. So as I'm solving, I'm immediately decided that, you know what, I'm gonna be uh, using, I'm gonna be taking out the corner in this slot. So as I solve this, I'm gonna take out the corner in this slot. And I notice uh, the edge piece here and it kind of joins in. And then I'll just solve while plotting my next F12 pair. Now a final tip is more of an additional note and you're likely already doing this accidentally because of your habit with looking at the pair you're solving. But sometimes a corner piece will come on the top layer while you're solving and this is because you're using an additional slot to solve your F12 pair. So to elaborate, so far what I've been showing you in the previous examples is that we've just been manipulating, manipulating one slot which is where the F12 pair is destined to go to. So let's take a look at this case right here to uh, make this more clear. When I'm solving this pair, really the only pieces that are going to be affected are whatever are in the slot because these two pieces are what's going to be uh, being inserted into here. So this corner piece is automatically going to come out. And same with this corner piece that I'm just temporarily inserting here since again, this is the block that's going in. So the net result is that any corner pieces that enter in here are going to be in the top layer. Now in contrast, we can have other slots being affected while solving an F12 pair. So in this case, when I'm going to be solving this pair, this slot is also going to be affected because when I'm doing R U2, R prime U2 R, you see how this corner piece is going to come into the top layer? So when you're doing something like that, sometimes what you'll notice is that when there's no, no corner piece in the top layer, you'll notice that you'll get a free corner piece coming in and then you can use that to track. So as I'm solving that, I'm now looking into my next, uh, where the edge piece is, and I notice it's gonna be over here, since I can't find it anywhere else. And I'll go ahead and solve that while looking into my next F2L pair. Okay, so now I'll illustrate how these foundational tips work when doing look ahead practice, and I'll go through a couple of demonstrations. So for this first example solve, my first pair is going to be these orange, green, uh, these two pieces right here. So as I'm solving this, I notice that there's a white corner piece over here. So I'll be tracking that and I'll be looking for this corresponding edge piece, which I notice is going to be right over here. So I'll go right into this pair and I'll try to find my next F12 piece. I can't find it in the top corner, but I notice that as I'm solving this pair here, the red and green pair, this corner piece is going to come on top and I'm going to be tracking its edge, which I notice is going to be uh, aligned right here. Now I'm going to rotate and I'm going to solve this and I can't find any corner pieces. And since I'm doing my last slot here, that means that the corner piece is going to end up being over here. So I notice he notices it's here and I notice the edge piece is over here. So I just have to do this to solve my final F12 pair. Okay, for this next example, uh, my first pair is again going to be the green and orange pieces. And I notice that there are no white corner pieces on the top layer. So I notice that the slot that I'm modifying, which is where I'm being, gonna insert this pair, has a corner piece and actually also its corresponding edge piece. So I'll be tracking that. And I see these two, so I'm gonna put these up. Again, I still see no white corner pieces. So that means that I'm probably gonna have to resort to um, going into the next slot and just immediate an empty slot and just immediately taking out uh, that corner piece there since it has to be a white corner piece. So I'm going to go like this. And the reason why, actually, I'll just clarify this. So the most more efficient version of solving this F12 piece is just 
doing a D prime and then inserting this edge here. But um, in order to, I made up my mind that I'm gonna take out this corner piece and it actually helps me because it helps preserve that momentum because if I didn't uh, automatically decide while solving this that I'm just gonna take out this corner piece, uh, I'd have to first recognize that, oh, hey, this is the orange and blue corner piece and then I have to recognize how to efficiently solve that case. So that would actually take up a lot more time. The fact that I'm just immediately gonna be taking out this corner piece here uh, actually helps preserve my momentum and actually that would have a faster solve rather than pausing and determining the most efficient case for solving that F12 pair. But anyways, I'm gonna solve this again that there, I noticed that there are no white corner pieces. So that means because I'm also on my last slot that the corner piece is gonna be over here. So I'm gonna look, I see these, this one and finish it off like that. Okay, and I'll do one last example solve. So my first pair is gonna be this red blue, these two red blue pieces here. So I noticed that there are gonna be no, there are, there are so far no white corner pieces at the top. And because there's nothing coming out from here, I'm gonna immediately just take out a corner from this next empty slot. So I'm just gonna go like this. And then I noticed that the corresponding edge piece is right over here so i'll just go ahead and do and pair these two up and still that there are no white corner pieces at the top but i noticed that as i am setting these two up this corner piece is being brought out so that's pretty convenient and as i'm solving this i notice that the corresponding edge piece is right here so i solve that and then i can just rotate insert these two sorry pair these two up i notice that the next corner piece is going to be over here since there's nothing over on top and I know the edge piece is here, and I'll just go ahead and solve these two like that. All right, so that's gonna be it from me, guys. I hope this video was helpful, especially the, for especially those who are new to look ahead. Now, the concepts I share do not cover the complexity of look ahead skills one can use, which is why I've also created an advanced concepts video, and I'll link that in the description. I'll be covering some other concepts you can use to improve your look ahead game if you are at the level where your spatial awareness is good enough and thus can have enough processing time to incorporate those concepts. And an example of what I'll be covering is being able to determine if a white corner piece will remain in the top layer when solving an F12 pair. So in this video, I purposely designed my examples to not have that, but it is quite common in scrambles to encounter a case where you're solving a pair and then and you are tracking a corner piece, but then that corner piece ends up in the bottom layer. And that makes it difficult because it's typically harder to solve uh, an F12 pair when the corner piece is in the bottom layer. So being able to predict if a corner piece will be in the bottom layer will help save time as you can then quickly find another corner to use. But again, those are more advanced concepts and you don't need to worry about that if you're just starting off with look ahead. In fact, just mastering just in fact, mastering just these concepts I taught you in this video can certainly bring you to sub 10, if not at least sub 13. But anyways, guys, that's it for me. And now let's head into the outro. Hey guys, that's gonna be it for me for this video. I hope you found my examples and explanations insightful. Now to help me improve my content to better fit your learning style, I would really appreciate it if you could spare a couple of seconds just to fill out this feedback form and its link is in the description. So here you can let me know what went well, what didn't go well, and what aspects you would like me to include or work on in the future. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care.